preparing cards from like tarot. You can find your your future. It works in uh, any way because it only works. This one, this one is very interesting because it's about uh, nothing. Now I'm living in Barcelona and I came here to do an exhibition mm -hmm. and the exhibition is about the box and this is the box. If you have a problem you can open the box and you put there your problem and then you close the box and the box will transform the problem in good energy. The city is nice to think about the things which is another day forgotten. For example, Anna Nicola Smith, she's, she's died. Everybody talking about it. You know? After two days, everybody would forget it. Yum, yum. Sandwich and tacos. Mm. You eat these toads, yeah. Really good. <laughs> I'm the most commercial artist in Tacheres. I pay all my art by myself. And if somebody buys one of my pictures, uh, I am financing his art. How do you do that? I don't know, I just sell it for not enough. I discovered a formula. It's my best uh, work. The formula of love. This is very important, like the relativity theory. It's what I told you, the box. and. What can you find in the box? You can find everything, the, the most rigid structure and nothing. And everything and nothing is uh, love. You can work uh, in a place where you are alone or you can choose to work in a place where there's people who are doing more or less uh, the same stuff. And I did both stuff. I painted even my toilet. So when I didn't have a studio, a toilet was enough. Oh, I'll paint pictures in here. So. Uh, if I'm here, I can do put these three days, and then obviously the Gerald is over there, or Blanco's over here. Like ah, humans. So you don't get so crazy. And part of this is a gallery. Like you see, we have the patches on display in the clothes, the paintings, um, the music. Uh, we made some CDs, and now the CD player broke. And there's a lot of changing of ideas between this group. I mean, even if it's just sharing equipment, and you have a guitarist in one room and a drummer in another room that start collaborating, you know? And maybe teach some of the instrument or just play jam together. What kind of music do you play? Uh, uh, okay, let's call it junk. <laughs> <laughs> There's some noise when you run away. <laughs> This place was originally squatted in 1989, and there's a lot of fight. The city of Berlin wanted to tear it down. It was, and they fought for it and managed to save the building. I was not here. I don't know so much. I only hear stories. Uh, but the stories went something like this. First, it was a big squat. It was uh, there's a foco here, uh, silkscreen workshops, uh, artist workshops, bar, concerts. Uh, I don't know many communal projects, uh, bike shops and there was nothing here. All these stores around us were not here. There's no restaurant within five blocks. This was all East Germany and all this fancy stuff came. And as money came in here and more money came to the bars and stuff got built, people started fighting in politics over money and power and who rules what and who can say what. And lots of bullshit happened. First note, there were no locks anywhere. And then people were coming here and then more drugs were coming here and things were getting stolen. And and if someone had, you know, a tool, a TV, and you wanted to use a TV display, you take the TV from their room and you put it in your room. And then they look for it, they hear you taking it, go to your room and take it back. But, you know, the doors are open, so things move around, but they come back to you. 
And then people start locking them, and so when everything goes away, it never comes back, because it's behind another locked door. Now everything is controlled by the office, and only certain people have keys and rails and regulations and bureaucracy. You need the social atmosphere, you need people talking, you need the community there. And if you try to do a similar space but everyone is just looking for their own money and their own space and not talking to other people, it falls apart. Yeah, I see that lots of people is uh, with the door closed and they don't know other people, other artists. But I came here to to learn with the people. So I'm all the time I'm knocking doors. Yeah, it's like in every squad, I guess, or in every artist company. There, all the artists they have their own mind, and then they're just arguing with each other. Then it's changing. Then they're mm. selling it to somebody else. There's still some. I don't know. I still think there's some cool stuff here, but uh, this house is far more commercialized than. It's not really coming from underground culture at all. It's getting more snobby and more touristic. Right now, basically, they have a contract to have this building free until 2008. And in January 2008, a development company has full rights to do anything they want to this building. Uh, and the current plan, I think, is to make it some sort of hotel. They cannot tear down the structure because it is registered as a historic landmark, but they can kick every artist out and re renovate all the rooms. You think they're going to do it? Yeah, there's more money there. A Copenhagen police spokesman calls it a rather busy and sad night. For the second night in a row, hundreds of youths turned downtown Copenhagen, Denmark, into a battle zone. The unrest was triggered by Thursday's eviction of people living in a four-story building. The structure was used for years as free housing and a well-known cultural center. Those living there, the government views them as squatters, refused to leave, saying the city had no right to sell the building while it was still in use. Some supporters say the violence was inevitable. Um, another story has heard that the office wanted to make more money here. Some other people want the space empty, all of us out so they can make money here. 